Let me show you a simple trick with which we can get much more beautiful deep blue skies using Photoshop's selective color adjustment layer. If you want to follow along, feel free to download this raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process for the image. So if you're only here for the tutorial portion, make sure to check the chapters of the video because that will be coming at the end of the video. Now for the basic adjustments, I'm going to begin by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because I want to make this a very vibrant spring scene with very saturated colors. And this profile is perfect for that. Then let's expand the lights panel. And I'm starting by dropping the highlights since there are parts of the sky that are quite a bit too bright for my taste. I'm going to bring the highlights down a lot in order to get back some details in here. That's looking much better. Next up, let's raise the shadows, getting out more details from the darker parts of the image. Beautiful. Then due to these adjustments, we lost a little bit of contrast, but don't worry, we can start reintroducing contrast by bringing up the whites very carefully. Always pay close attention to the histogram because we really don't want to introduce any clipping. You could also hold down the Alt key while adjusting the white slider. And as you push it up, at some point you will see clipping kicking in right here. So that's of course too much. Let's tone it down a notch. I think something right around here looks nice. And then let's also bring up the blacks because we have some clipping in the darkest areas of the image. That's something we don't want to have either. All right, that's looking beautiful. Then we can skip over the color panel because I don't need to adjust the white balance or the vibrance or saturation. Thanks to the profile we are using right here, the base saturation looks beautiful already. However, I'm going to head into the effects tab to bring up the texture, introducing some more sharpness. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze, making this image look a little bit more contrasty. And at the same time, I wanna slightly bring down the clarity just for some soft glow effect on top. All right, so that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let me turn off all these things so we can compare the image from before to after. Much better already. However, we did lose a little bit of depth in the foreground. That's what we are going to change next with a bit of masking. To bring back depth, what we want to do is to play around with the light situation. Right here in the foreground, you can see some shadows. I want to make them deeper. Therefore, I'm using a linear gradient and I'm simply overlapping the shadows right here in the foreground. And then all I need to do is to bring down the exposure and instantly the image will look much better with a way stronger 3D effect. I can do the opposite for the light effect on top. So let me create a sky selection. Of course, we don't want to target the sky, so I'm going to invert it by clicking on this icon right here. This will give us a perfect landscape selection. Of course, we need to modify it. Let's subtract a linear gradient and we're taking out the area from the bottom, which we just made darker previously. Also, I wanna take out the trees at the top. I'm simply going to use the brush for that, brushing over these. All right, then what I wanna do is to bring up the exposure, introducing more light. And I'm also going to add a little bit of clarity just for some extra punch in that bright area. Then let's work on the sky, which will be the most problematic area of the image. My goal for blue skies like these is always to add a lot of contrast, making the blue darker against those white puffy clouds. So let's start this using a color range mask. With that color range mask, I'm clicking right in here in that blue part of the sky, which will give us a proper selection. There are parts of the sky that are not selected, which I don't like. So I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just clicking right in here to add another color point. And there's a thin blue line, which is also not selected. So again, I'm holding down the shift key to add yet another point to that color range mask. That's looking much better. Now I only want to affect the top part of the sky. So I'm going to subtract the linear gradient and I'm taking out all of that bottom area like this. And what I'm going to do next is to bring down the exposure, making the blue part of the sky darker this way. With this color range mask, I'm actually also affecting these clouds, which I don't want. So I'm going to subtract the color range mask and let's click right in here in the white clouds. This again will subtract parts of the blue sky on the left again. So I'm going to use the refine slider 
tone this color range mask down a bit like this. Okay. Another way with which we can make the sky look more interesting is to use a linear gradient and just overlaying all of that sky like that. And instead of separating the clouds from uh, the blue sky using a color range mask, I'm now simply going to pump up the clarity a bit, which always looks nice on skies like this. Of course, you don't want to overdo it, but something around 15 usually looks quite good. All right, then we're almost done with the masking. I do want to add a little bit of light coming in from the left side. So let me create a radial gradient, big fat one like this. I'm going to tilt it very slightly and I'm also going to place the center outside of the image. All right, that's looking good. What I want to do in here to create this light effect, I want to increase the exposure carefully. And I also want to bring down the dehaze, creating some glow coming in from this side. Beautiful. Now I'm still not quite happy with the sky. Let me create another color range mask with which I specifically target the left top part right here. And let me also subtract the linear gradient, taking out most of it from this side. And now let me pull down the exposure, kind of creating a more balanced look up there in the sky. Okay, that's better. So here we have the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Looks much more interesting with that light and shadow effect in the foreground, but also the sky really helps to make the image pop with that nice contrast. However, you can already see the blue tones in the sky are kind of too much and adjusting these blue tones is always a, bit, a little bit tricky. We could try fixing them in the color mixer. And here, what we could do is to bring down the blue saturation. But if we push it too far down, again, it just doesn't look good. So I want to tone it down, but not as much, just a little bit like this maybe. At the same time, I want to emphasize those spring colors, so yellow and green. Let's raise them. That's looking nice. All right. Another thing we could do to adjust these blue tones is to go down into the calibration tab, bringing down the blue primary slider, which will give the blue sky some more of a cyan color tone, which does look pretty good indeed, but it's still a bit strange to look at. I do want to bring up the saturation here just to make the other colors pop because this will not only affect the blue tones, but the other color tones of the image as well. Now this would be our image after the raw adjustments. The bottom looks awesome, but still the blue tones aren't quite there yet. We need to further adjust these. So how can we do that? Let's open up this object, which will bring us into Photoshop. What we are going to do in here is to use an adjustment layer. So click the icon right here. In this menu, we are choosing the selective color adjustment layer. With this tool, we can target all these different color tones and make precise adjustments to them. Since we want to work on the blue tones of the sky, we're going to choose the blue color right here. Now, what's the issue? The blue tones are a little bit too intense. I want to dial down the blue tones. So I'm going to use the yellow slider and I'm going to push it up. Right away, you can see quite a big difference. Let me turn off this adjustment layer. This was our image after the raw adjustments. And here we have the changed blue tones using the selective color adjustment layer. Of course, we can continue playing around with these sliders. Yeah, so I want to further reduce the blueness of the sky. For that, I'm going to use the cyan slider and I'm going to drop it. That's looking nice. And we could also play around with magenta. Let's raise it a bit. Now you might not notice much, but once I deactivate it, you will see a huge difference from before with a way too cartoonish sky to after with a much more balanced looking blue tone. But we're not done yet. We, are, we also have this black slider, which will control the luminance of the blue tones. That means bringing it down will make the blue tones brighter. But that's not what I want. I want to have some contrast in here. I'm going to bring it up, making the blue tones darker, giving the whole image a little more punch this way. All right, that looks really, really nice. Still, we're not done yet. Besides the blue tones, we can also work on the cyan tones because there are cyan tones in the sky. 
Again, I want to reduce the blueness, so I'm going to bring up the yellow tones. All right, I also want to bring down the cyan tones, further reducing the blue intensity of this image. And let's bring up magenta. Something like this looks pretty good. So once again, let me deactivate the, the selective color adjustment layer. That's what we have started with. And this is where we are now, looking much, much better with a deeper blue sky. It's almost like a polarization effect. The great thing is you can apply these settings to pretty much all of your images with skies like this. If you don't want to repeat all these steps for every image though, you can save this as a preset. Therefore, you want to click on the burger icon right here and we want to save this selective color preset. Let's simply call it a deep blue sky and hit save. And right here in the presets menu, you can see the preset and choose it for all the other images you want to work on. All right, so we're pretty much done with the image. I just want to clean it up. Let me merge everything, hitting Control Shift Alt E. And let's zoom in and get and clean up some of these trees, which we really don't need. I'm using the spot healing brush for that. Actually, let me use the clone stem tool. All right, and there we have it. I hope this little Photoshop tutorial was something that will be helpful for your images if you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, as always, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.